please, as we worship you, help us to worship you in spirit and in truth, Father God. Lord, we just come at this time into your hands, Father God. We thank you for CG for having prepared uh, this time, Father God, having prepared this Bible study, Father God, anoint him and use him powerfully for your glory, Father God. We pray that your word will fall on good ground, Father God, and it will bring forth and harvest. Lord, we will not only be hearers of your word, but doers of your word, Father God. Once again, we just surrender each and every one who is uh, attending this Bible study. Our lives will never be the same, Lord. And we will learn to speak the words that you want us to speak, Father God. And uh, even as we heard your word last week, Father God, as we searched our hearts, Father God, help us to have a heart pleasing unto thee, Father God. We want to thank you and praise you. We just surrender this time into your hands. Surrender Chrissy also into your hands as she leads us in worship. Let your name be exalted and glorified. Holy Spirit, Amen. take over. Do what you want to do. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Bless the
study but as your son master god siji master god waited upon you to get this word to impart into everyone who's joining our blessed are everyone who join and be blessed with the word where we learn your important teachings and principles so that we may apply them to our life and live a life of victory and glory father god Thank you, Lord. Anoint once again, Siji. Use him mightily for your glory, Pastor. Also, anoint every heart to receive this word. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' most precious name, pray, Lord. Amen. 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 Over to Brother Siji. Amen. Praise God. Thank you so much, uh, Pastor Manohar, Pastor Dennis. Thank you once again for the opportunity to share uh, with the Glorious Ministries uh, Bible study. Amen. And um, I'm so grateful to God because God has given me uh, another uh, time to lift up his name. And uh, before we go into uh, today's session, uh, I just want to recap on what we have done till now. Uh, I'm so glad uh, that so many of you have turned up today. Let me just quickly go on to what we covered uh, till now. Amen. Um, as Pastor Manohar mentioned, the uh, Bible study is known as Spoken Words, the Spoken Word series, right? And uh, we looked at whether we are connected with God. Very important that we are always connected with God. Amen. This is what we did for the first session. Uh, we said, remain in me and I will remain in you. That's a beautiful promise that we have. Amen. We also said the Spoken Word series is to help uh, families and individuals to learn the biblical way of communication so that you can build and lead successful God-centered marriages and parenting. Yeah, So we believe God will transform your marriages and family lives if you let God govern and direct you through His Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, we also said that as a church, uh, you know, we are very keen that, uh, you know, your relationships, especially in uh, your family uh, is restored and it is in the right manner. Amen. And I believe that God has a purpose and that's why we are having this session today. Amen. Um, this is the year of divine protection and restoration. Amen. And we spoke about that. We said God said that he will restore you to health and heal your wounds. Amen. And this is a promise that God has given us. This year he is ready he is willing he wants us to be restored so that's the uh, purpose and we know that's where we uh, are going with amen so uh, we had a time of evaluation on the first session to try and understand where are each one of us yeah uh, last session we spoke about our heart's condition and we said our words reveal our heart's condition because jesus said out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Amen. And then we said, a good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth 
evil things. Amen. And then we looked at words to build. We said that, you know, we should only speak words to build, you know. So that's something which we looked at, right? And we said, let there not be any corrupting talk which comes out of our mouths, but only such as is good for building up as fits the occasion, that it may give grace to those who hear. It may give grace to those who hear. Amen? Then we looked at what defiles us, because Jesus said, those things which proceed out of the mouth come from the heart, and they are the ones which defile a man. So we said, that Jesus mentioned in Matthew chapter 15 verses 18 to 19 for out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts murders adulteries fornications thefts false witness and blasphemies amen so Jesus said these are the things which defile a man and not what you eat right so this is something we studied in detail we looked at the different kinds of influences that our heart goes through right and then we said that we wanted to clean our heart. We cried out to the Lord and we said, Lord, would you create a clean heart in us and renew a right spirit within me? Amen. So I believe all of you who have heard the word last week has set your heart in the right place and ask God to clean you up. Amen. And then we ask God to protect our heart. Protect our heart. Keep your heart with all vigilance for from it, flows the springs of life. Amen. So uh, it was very important for us to uh, clean our hearts. Amen. Last week, because if we are not in a place of cleaning our heart and protecting our heart, then, you know, we will be influenced by other things. Amen. And those things will reduce us. And they will become all powerful. Yeah. And then they will start leading us astray, which we don't want to do. Amen. So we need to understand that we have to fill it with the word of God so you know the spirit of God can lead us amen so if your heart is not ready then I would suggest that take a minute or so and then get your heart ready amen because uh, if your heart is not ready you you'll try to play smart with words yeah but you will not be successful because at, at some point of time your heart will throw up a word and reveal the real you yeah. So uh, in order not to get into an issue, the, the best thing is to get your heart ready. Amen. Uh, my all time favorite passage is, um, you know, uh, from Exodus chapter three, uh, verses one onwards. Yeah. Uh, as I, uh, you know, uh, share this uh, scripture with you, I would like you to look at the scripture. And uh, I know that uh, many of us already know the scripture, but very very important amen i love the scripture because uh, you know uh, let's look at exodus chapter 3 now moses was tending the flock of jethro his father-in-law the priest of midian and he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to horeb the mountain of god and the angel of the lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush so he looked and behold the bush was burning with fire but the bush was not consumed then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. Amen. So this is a, a verse which excites me because if we are not ready and we are not ready like Moses to say, I am going to turn aside. I'm going to listen to what God is speaking to me. Then nothing is going to happen in our lives. Amen. And look at verse 4. So when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. Amen. So if your heart is ready today and you have turned aside to look at what God is speaking into your lives, then the Lord is going to speak into your lives. Amen. And uh, you know, if, if you are in the right place this evening, and I, I'm so excited to share with you that God is going to speak into your lives this evening because you know, uh, we know about spoken words. We know communication is a major issue these days, right? Due to verbal abuse, there are fights everywhere, right? In families, in churches, in government, in businesses, you know, it has led to breakdown of so many of these things, you know, it's led to divorces, depression and suicides, right? So many of these things have happened, right? So today, 
even as we are going to study this, I want us to pay attention and I hope your heart is in the right place. Amen. Let's quickly go to what uh, I want to share with you this evening. Amen. Spoken words, uh, taming the tongue, taming the tongue. Amen. Now, uh, all of us know, you know, uh, the tongue, you know, it reveals something, right? When, a, when you go to meet a doctor, what does the doctor do? Doctor say, okay, extend your tongue to me. And then he will look at the tongue and then he finds the health our health at, by looking the tongue. Similarly, people can understand the health of our thoughts as the tongue speaks the thoughts of the heart. Amen. The tongue speaks the thoughts of the heart. So it's very important that the tongue can reveal things. Amen. What our tongue says lets people know what is our current situation. Are we uh, fearful now? Are we angry? Are we joyful? Yeah. So that is how the tongue uh, communicates, amen? The tongue can communicate to another person what we are going through at that particular time, amen? Let's move ahead. So the key words we have taken today is death and life are in the power of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and those who love it will eat its fruits. So many people uh, know the first part of this verse. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. But very few people give importance to the latter part of it. Because it says, those who love it will eat its fruits. Amen. So we have to be careful. We've got to be careful. Amen. Tongue brings healing. Amen. Tongue brings healing. There is one whose rash words are like sword thrusts. But the tongue of the wise brings healing. Amen. Tongue of the wise brings healing. You have happiness from the tongue. If you want to enjoy life and see many happy days, keep your tongue from speaking evil and your lips from telling lies. We see that in 1 Peter 3 and 11. Amen. So you can have happiness from the tongue. Amen. The same way, never underestimate the tongue. Never underestimate the tongue. Because James 3, 5 says, in the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches, but a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. Yeah, we know how, how powerful is the tongue. Amen. You know, if you look at the human body, the tongue is the most powerful muscle, they say, the most powerful muscle in, in the body, you know. So the tongue is supposed to be... Uh, you know, something that we have to be careful. Amen. Proverbs 11 and verse 9 says, With his mouth, the godless man destroys his neighbor. Yeah. So you can destroy someone with the mouth. And Proverbs chapter 18 verse 8 says, The words of gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to a man's innermost parts. Innermost parts. So we have to be careful. If we are not careful, then we will start doing things wrong with the tongue. Amen. That is not what we want to do this evening. Right. We want to learn how to use the tongue in the right way. Amen. Again, I want to tell you the tongue can corrupt. The tongue can corrupt. The tongue can defile the whole body. A person can corrupt his whole personality by using his tongue in a wrong way. Yeah. He can use his tongue in, in a wrong way. Yeah. So we've got to be very, very careful how we use our tongue. Amen. The tongue can pollute. An evil tongue pollutes not only a man's personal life, but it contaminates all its activities as well. It affects his whole life. So we, we need to be careful so that our life is not contaminated. It's not polluted. Amen. Let's move ahead. Yeah. So here... Um, we were talking about the uh, tongue, right? Let's look at the descriptions of the tongue. This is something interesting. The Bible describes the tongue in at least eight different ways. Now, three of them are very good and five are very destructive. You know, maybe it's easier to use our tongue in the wrong way than to use it in the right way. 
Let's see which are those descriptions. Yeah. First of all, the good descriptions. Proverbs 10.20 says, The tongue of the righteous is choice silver. Yeah, silver. Proverbs 12.18 says, The tongue of the wise promotes health. Proverbs 15.4 says, A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. So we have three descriptions here. In the good descriptions, we see it as silver, we see it as health, and then tree of life. The same way, we see also the evil descriptions. Yeah, Jeremiah 9, 8 says that their tongue is an arrow shot out. It speaks deceit. Yeah, James 3, 6 says the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is so set among our members that it defiles the whole body and sets on fire the course of nature. Yeah, so we saw two evil descriptions. Then we are seeing again, it's a razor. Yeah. Psalms 52 2 says your tongue devises destruction like a sharp razor. Yeah. And then we see in Psalm 64 3, who sharpened their tongue like a sword and bent their bows to shoot their arrows. Bitter words. Yeah. So we are seeing so many evil descriptions. And again, we see in James 3 8, it is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Yeah. So when we look at the tongue we see you know how are those uh, descriptions yeah so we've got to be very very careful because if we are not careful we will end up saying things which we really don't want and uh, you know hurt other people right so today first of all i want to tell you we should stop saying hurtful words to each other stop saying hurtful words to each other because Romans 12, 14 says, Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Amen? Bless and do not curse them. Many people, you know, they feel justified, you know, to say hurtful words. You know, that's something which I have found, you know. So let's understand, why do people do this? You know, people say hurtful words because, you know, they feel justified because somebody has hurt them. Yeah? But I want to tell you, Romans 12 asks us not to repay evil for evil. Because live peaceably with all men. You know, because the Bible says, vengeance is mine, I will repay. Amen. That's what the Lord tells us. Amen. So, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. You know, that's what we are seeing in the Bible. Amen. You know, um, I have worked with people and sometimes, you know, uh, ladies, you know, they feel so justified to hurt others, whether it is a colleague or, you know, maybe it's a mother-in-law, you know, they say that, you know, she said that these kind of words to me and now she's going to pay for it. Just w wait and watch what, I, what is going to happen, how I'm going to put her in her place. That's not something which we should do as believers, amen, because First Peter Chapter 4 verse 8 says, love covers a multitude of sins. Amen. So if we have an issue, whether it is a colleague or a mother-in-law or anybody, then we need to go directly discuss in love and pray together. And that's something very important. And we need to realize those things this evening. Amen. Because when the Bible tells us that, you know, we need to, uh, you know, be careful how we speak, I think we should ensure that we take heed amen luke 17 3 and uh, matthew chapter 18 verses 15 you know jesus talks about take heed to yourselves if your brother sins against you rebuke him and if he repents forgive him amen so there are ways in which you need to handle it but not by hurting the other person amen so we we've got to be very careful how we use words amen colossians 3 8 Put away curse and obscene words. Put away curse and obscene words. But now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander and obscene talk from your mouth. Obscene talk from your mouth. You know, some of the challenges we have today is because of words we have said in the past. Just uh, reflect on this. You know, many people have said words, you know. And because of those words, today they are having an issue. Amen? Warning. 
on words we speak. Jesus said, I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. Every careless word they speak. Amen. Negative words lead to regret. Ah, this is very, very important for us to understand. Negative words. Amen. Matthew 12, 37, Jesus continues to say, For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. By your words you will be condemned. You know, many people today, because of the words that they have been spoken, they're going through difficult situations. If you reflect on yourself, you will realize what I am saying. Because, you know, many of us have been in a problem. Maybe at work. Or with friends or family, you know, and because we have said words in anger and we cannot take it back. Now we like to take it back, but then it is too late. Amen. And many people, many, many people, especially in offices, they have lost promotions, increments. Amen. Some have lost even uh, properties from their parents because how they have hurt their parents. And then the parents don't want to give their inheritance. You know, they don't want to give their properties to the children who have hurt them. Amen. Some have lost even favor from their pastors in churches, in leadership. Yeah. Because of the words that they have used. Yeah. Even from bosses and many others who could have taken a good decision to support them in their careers. Yeah. So evaluate. You may be in a place where you're so angry with your boss. But that's not the right attitude, my friend. Because, you know, they have been put by God in that place to bless you. Amen. And I know in some families, they don't even allow some siblings to come together because of the way they speak. You know, if they come together, that's it. There's going to be fire over that place. Yeah. So they cannot allow those people to come together. This evening, I want to ask you, what are you planning? Are you planning to have words of hurt and intimidation? You know, are you planning to proactively, you know, plan and scheme to use words of hurt, maybe to your spouse or to somebody else? Amen. The other day I was talking to someone and after the counseling and then a few days later, somebody said, I am not going to change my decisions. I'm going to be like this only, you know, my decisions are firm. I'm not going to change. Amen. If when God tells you to change and if you're not willing to change, then, uh, you know, nobody can help you. Amen. There are some people, you know, they say that, you know, only a crying baby can get food. So let me push people and use words to destroy people's lives. Yeah. I need to speak proactively so I can avoid issues that can happen later. Some people say, you know, do as many fights as possible earlier in marriage so that they, there cannot be any more fights later. You know, so all these are wrong ways to do it. I know people, when they are in a fight, you know, maybe the wife will scream and then she will say, God, take me away. You know, let me die. I cannot bear this. See the kind of words that we use. Little do we understand these words will hold us to ransom. You know, some people will say, you know, you're good for nothing. You'll never be good. What kind of things are you doing? You know, you're spoiling everything, you know. So these kind of words, you know, they, they're just trying to uh, exhibit our unhappiness at things, you know. But that is not the way we do. Amen. We've got to be very, very careful how we use words. Otherwise, you know, we will be, uh, you know, saying words that will destroy other people's lives. Another thing I want to focus on this evening is watching your tone. Watching the tone of how you speak. Amen. Some people, uh, you know, the Holy Spirit has already spoken to many of us and said, be careful, you know, watch your tone, you know, but, you know, many, many of us are still not in the place. Uh, we are not careful in, in our communication, you know. Sometimes, uh, you know, we can become tone deaf, you know, because we are not listening to what the Spirit of God wants us to do. Watching our tone. You know, when our words, you know, even if it's truthful, are delivered with negative tone, it triggers anger or a different reaction in, uh, in people, you know. For example, you know, if we say uh, we are all going to church, right? So uh, sometimes uh, instead of saying 
you know, we, we're going to be late for church in a nice way. You know, if we use a, a hurtful tone, what happens? You know, immediately a reaction comes because the other person understands in a different way because of your tone, right? Because the other person understands that, oh, this person is accusing me. You know, it's all your fault. And, you know, I'm sick and tired. You know, that's the kind of response that person gets. Yeah, right? So we've got to be careful. Yeah? Any sarcasm, any shaming, any pessimism, uh, any negativity, um, you know, whining, insincerity, any of these things are, uh, in, in, it's more about a tone than a word, you know. Some people roll their eyes, you know. They shake their head, you know. They shrug their shoulders and, you know, all kinds of non-verbal uh, communication, you know. But these are all negative tones. Can we stop doing this? Yeah, because that's not something as a believer we need to practice. All right. So let's stop these things. It's very, very important that we need to stop such things. Amen. Let's move ahead. So if that is the case, then we need to guard the tongue. Amen. We have to guard the tongue. Proverbs 25 and 28 says, a tongue without a guard is like a city without a wall. A tongue without a guard is like a city without a wall. Amen. Just imagine what kind of a situation it will be. So if that is the case, can we say that we, we can tame the tongue? You know, because if we can examine what goes into our mouths, then why not examine what comes out of our mouth, right? So... Many people say, okay, let me start working on, on the words. Let me start working on the tone, right? But then you, you, know, you, you say that you want to tame the tongue, you know, because if we can control or tame the tongue, we can control everything else, right? But then I want to show you something interesting, right? It's difficult to tame the tongue. Difficult to tame the tongue because the Bible says no man can tame the tongue. <laughs> no man can tame the tongue. So today, if we want to play smart, that's not going to work out, man. Because we want to really, you know, put our tongue in place you know, and be careful. But then, you know, there is a way in which the Bible teaches. First, deal with your heart. Then, how do you approach, you know, using words? Amen. I'm going to show you something very interesting. Amen. Let's quickly go on to that. Amen. Bridle the tongue. You know, we cannot tame the tongue, but with God's help, we can bridle it. Just as we put a bridle on a horse to guide him in the direction we want him to go. Because Psalms 31, 39 and chapter 39 verse 1 says, I will take heed to my ways. That I sin not with my tongue. I will keep my mouth with a bridle. Amen. So you, you may not be able to tame your tongue. But you can bridle it. Amen. You can bridle your tongue. What is a bridle? Amen. Here you can see a bridle that is put on a horse. Right. Especially that particular uh, in object that comes on the tongue of the horse. The, to the horse is really powerful. But it cannot jump. Right. Because this bridle is holding it back. Amen. So, what are we talking about? We're talking about self-control. Amen. Using self-control. That's why we were trying to talk about taming the tongue here. But then we've moved to say that we need self-control. Amen. Because we have to bridle our tongue. Amen. That's the most important thing. What is self-control? Self-control is the ability to control oneself. It involves moderation, constraint, and the ability to say no to our base desires and fleshly lusts. Amen. So it's very, very important that we need to you know, have self-control. Because without self-control, you know, uh, we will blow up things and we will say things. Amen. You know, I want to talk to you uh, some things about self-control, especially. You know, today, uh, many people are going through difficult circumstance because they don't have any self-control. And because of the words that they use, you know, they're going through a lot of issues, you know. 
and i'm going to pick up a uh, few things you know which which i feel is the most important thing that i need to speak uh, to families this evening amen number 1 you know sexual intimacy this is something very very important to families amen you may be wondering I, why i'm taking this area but most people are so secretive and not even ready to discuss this but this is a major major issue you know something that god has given to families to couples to be one is being destroyed by the evil one amen he is having a field day and most people are playing into his hands suffering in their marriages amen so i'm going to address this you know if you are in that place you know speaking about her body you know about a girl's body and saying comments about uh, his attitude destroying intimacy then i would urge you please stop using those kind of words amen you your choice of words spoils your romance you know and every sexual relationship most of the time i have found after counseling many people i found that most of the time wives want to have a good relationship and intimacy but they're so offended by the words of the husband amen and the same way because the words of the wife the husband is so very offended you know the husband's thing it's so peaceful you know i let her go wherever she wants you know it's better not to get into intimacy you know so i don't get hurt by her words amen i have seen so many husbands telling me you know i don't want to get hurt by her words because she doesn't respect me you know it's better that i don't get into any intimacy amen so if you are listening to me this evening amen this is a very very important area nowadays instead of hugging and petting your own spouses you know people are petting dogs and cats you know how this world has changed amen so it's very very important that you know the, the words that we use has to be carefully used first peter chapter 3 it teaches us wives likewise be submissive to your own husbands that even if some do not obey the word they without a word may be won by the conduct of their wives when they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear and to the husbands first peter 3 says likewise dwell with them with understanding giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel and as being heirs together to the grace of life that your prayers may not be hindered amen what a word is coming to the husband you know you've got to take care of your wife as a weaker vessel and speak to her with nice words amen otherwise your prayers will not be even answered that's a warning to all husbands amen and another area is relationship with superiors yeah as you work in dubai i've seen many people having issues you know some hate their bosses you know and these are the people that god has put in their life to bless them amen but you don't behave well with your superiors yeah now uh, in my life i can tell you that many times you know my, most of my superiors were so nice and wonderful people but i have ex- also experienced some people who are not so good yeah i have also tried to you know complain about them to other people you know once or twice you know, they have also said things to me but then i have had to change you know because one day there was a boss who got upset with me you know and but then i had to tell him sorry i had to change myself because ephesians teaches us servants be obedient to those who are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling in sincerity of heart as to christ not with eye service as men pleasers but as bond servants of christ doing the will of god from the heart amen so can we come to an understanding that we need to deal with our superiors not with hate but with love and understanding that's what as a believer jesus wants us to do amen the same way sometimes i've seen that people they don't work together in offices you know because of uh you know the attitude of each person you know this is a very very important area because you know what happens to a lot of people is that they have a lot of arguments and fights in the offices and those are the places where you are getting blessed you know 
you're financially you're here to make some money right and at the same time god is trying to bless you through the places that he has put you in but you do not know how to maintain your relationships in your offices yeah let me uh, share with you uh, my own personal testimony yeah many years before you know uh, i have been in, in in a place where you know uh, i used to write emails you know uh, my written skills were quite good you know because i used to read a lot but so uh, when i started using email i started pouring uh, my heart into words and it used to hurt a lot of people you know sometimes you know even uh, my bosses used to tell me you know especially you know you need to if you need to get certain things done through people then you need to force people to get those things done to you <laughs> so i used to uh, you know force people i used to force different teams especially the people who used to support uh, me you know to meet deadlines you know and one day um, you know obviously you know we used to have some arguments and then one day i was in kuala lumpur you know i went for a conference there and then uh, one of this project director he came to me and said hi uh, he just wanted to meet me first time and spoke to me and all and after some time he said you know you appear so nice person you know but your emails are very different you know so i want to tell you this evening you know i was stunned you know what he said because you know my emails were going to him as arrows you know but then when he saw the real person and interacted with me he saw a different me amen and one day in dubai i was in this uh, equip session i was sharing this with pastor manor dr john joseph was teaching and then uh, it was about uh, spoken words you know long long before um, and then that time the lord told me you know stop this nonsense you know you need to know how to speak to colleagues how to speak to people you know this kind of attitude is not correct amen and then i said to the lord i said lord from today onwards i will change amen i started purposefully you know to being nice to everybody who comes across my way you know i started thanking my team members for supporting me because especially i used to take care of the middle east office so uh, uh, people who support me from india from uh you know singapore i had i started thanking them you know the first was to thank them for christmas thank them for new year you know i started taking gifts for them and i visited them in singapore you know and things changed you know things changed in a huge way you know suddenly i started becoming the blue eyed boy you know because they found this guy you know who was nasty in all the emails you know pushing them to get the works done is changed completely you know and i can tell you what changed that happened you know my support people started supporting me even on weekends you know when my order has to be processed they will do it whether it is a weekend or not whatever time it is they will process those things with me amen so i want to tell you you know how is your attitude how is the way in which you speak amen you know once this is a very interesting thing you know there used to be a girl who used to support me in singapore and uh, you know uh, one day i went into that floor office in singapore you know this is the order processing team in hq and i went there and uh, i met the senior manager and then you know what she did she called to this support girl and said hey your uh, boyfriend has come from dubai just imagine i looked at her and i said wow god what have you done you know i if i could change i'm sure each one of you can change amen and i'm speaking to you because i had to go through rough times because of the way i used to speak i used to push people but then when the bible says pursue peace with all people you know you need to come to an understanding how do you deal with people amen if something the words that you use are hurting people then this is the time to correct yourself amen number 4 relationship with your pastors and leaders other than office most of the time you deal with pastors 
Amen. You're church people. Amen. And having worked with so many pastors and leaders in, in UAE and across the globe, I can tell you, uh, pastors are maybe some of the most busiest people, you know. But sometimes they are blamed for every decision amen? And, and communication, you know. As uh, people in this church, you know, if you uh, have uh, been going through any such things, I want to tell you that very important for us to understand how we communicate with our pastors. And uh, not only our own pastors in, in, in Glorious Ministries, but even other men of God in the way we speak to them. Amen. We've got to be very, very careful because let's give love. Let's give the right words that we use. Amen. Even in my own life, I can tell you at a very young age, God started using me in different areas of leadership, especially in churches. I work with so many people, you know, but and when I wanted to communicate, I've poured out my heart and pushed people around, you know, because I thought that that is the way, you know, uh, I had to get things done. But then the Holy Spirit changed me. Amen. The Holy Spirit changed me because, in, you know, I learned that I need to wait on the Spirit of God because there is a time that the Spirit of God will take time to speak to my colleagues, to my pastors, to my uh, uh, people who I work with. Amen. So if you are in that place, you know, maybe it's your, your friend or somebody that you're upsetting, you know, please understand. Give them honor. Amen. Romans 13 says, let every soul be subject to the governing authorities. For there is no authority except God, except from God. Amen. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authority, resists the ordinance of God. And those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. Now, there are so many, many different things that the Bible speaks to us. Amen. In the way we need to conduct ourselves and the words that we need to use. Amen. <clears throat> Let me quickly go on to another scripture. Um, another point, basically. We were talking about self-control, right? Why are we asking about self-control here? Galatians 5, 22 to 23 says, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Amen? There is no law. Amen? So this is something that Jesus wants us to, you know, have. Self-control is a fruit of the Holy Spirit. So this is something we have to develop. Amen. Otherwise people will say, look at him. He does not have any self-control. That's a fruit that we have to bear. Amen. Very, very important. Amen. Let's move ahead. Importance of controlling our speech. So then, my beloved brethren, let every man should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. Slow to speak and slow to become angry. Amen. We have to control our speech. Amen. This is a time to evaluate ourselves. Is my speech consistently clean? Is it edifying and kind? You know, or am I criticizing others behind their back? You know, we call ourselves a believer. We don't behave as a believer. Do I teach other things that I have not obeyed myself? This is a time to acknowledge how am I in my office, in my church, in my family? Acknowledging the issue is the number one thing. Amen. If you repent and pray, you know, God is going to give you a new understanding. Because we are learning spoken words, which is so vital for your life. Amen. And there is a remedy to control your tongue. Amen. If you pray daily, the Lord will keep us away from every gossip, every unkind speech, you know. And I don't want to talk unfavorably about anyone. Amen. This evening, I want to tell you that God is going to do something supernatural in your life. Amen. The Bible teaches us uh, in Luke 5, 13, Matthew 8, 3, and Mark 1, 4, 40 to 41. You know, we know the story of people crying out and asking Jesus, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. This evening, if you have said words that has torn apart families, torn apart situations in your office, 
or in your church can you ask god to clean you up because jesus says i am willing be clean i am willing be clean i'm giving you a few more seconds to take your time this is the time to tell the lord lord i have said words and i have i've destroyed lives right now lord would you clean me up lord last week you spoke to me about my heart's condition i want you to clean my heart today i'm crying out to you and asking you lord would you clean my tongue i don't want to upset all the people that i come across i don't want to be street smart i want to be led by the spirit of god jesus are you if you are willing if you're willing you can clean me if you cry out this evening i want to tell you jesus is telling you i am willing be clean amen praise god let's move on you know it's so very important to exercise self control because we are all not so perfect amen but we should understand self control is so very important amen and one of the proof of god working in our lives is the ability to control our own thoughts words and actions you know because as long as we live in this world which is a fallen world we may be influenced by sin but then we have to get to a place of having that self control amen that's the most important thing that we need to understand amen james 126 again says brittle your tongue amen we saw that in psalms now we are seeing it in james 126 if anyone among you thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart this one's religion is useless <laughs> what a word if you are listening to me this evening and if you have heard this particular verse and the spirit of god is speaking to you then this is the time to bridle your tongue because jesus wants us to bridle our tongue amen very very important we are going to close very soon maybe you have been facing a lot of consequences today because of the way you have spoken your tongue and you do not know what to do you have heard about your heart's condition last week and if you need help can i request to you if you can reach out to the pastors of this church because there are people waiting on the wings i know that there is a purpose why god has brought us up right now and they are waiting for you and if you are hearing something from the lord and if you want to speak to your pastors please do that okay i'm going to show you a small video a small video and then Uh, we are going to close amen before that uh, you know psalms 1914 says that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight o lord my rock and my redeemer amen what a wonderful verse because it is addressing two areas it addressing your heart and the words of your mouth amen so very important for us to have that self control and bridle our tongue i'm going to before i close i just want to show you uh, this video and then we will uh, i'll pass it on to uh, jasper pastman or <clears throat> jesus hallelujah uh, i would lo- love to have you um, you know watch this carefully Uh, Jasper, can you see this? Yes, I can see it. Yeah. Can you hear it? Not yet. Yes, yeah. yes. Yes. Please watch carefully.
Does it ring a bell? You know, last three weeks, God is speaking to you about spoken words. Amen. And we have dealt with so many things in this last three weeks. And next week, we are going into something extremely important. But then, as we saw in this video, you know, Jesus said, Therefore, whoever hears these sayings of mine, and does them, I will liken them to a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain descended, the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it did not fall. For it was founded on the rock. But everyone who hears these sayings of mine, and does not do them, will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain descended. The floods came, and the winds blew, and beat on that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. This evening, uh, we have taken the time to ask God, you know, to give us that self-control. Amen. Whatever we learned last week, we learned about our heart's condition. And this week we found all those ways in which we can tame our tongue. But the Bible says you cannot tame the tongue. You have to brittle your tongue. Amen. We have to use that self-control because that is one of the you know, fruits of the Spirit. Amen. May God bless you. May God continue to help you. Amen. To brittle your tongue. The Pastor Tom, the Pastor Manu. Few minutes, just a few minutes, three to four minutes. Surrender ourselves to the Lord because I'm sure you're all getting where you want to get, understanding the importance of what we speak, how we speak, and the cause for it, where it comes from, how to deal with it. One of the best ways today we've learned is about the self control. How do we self control is? The another way is to give our control to the hands of the Lord. Willingly, with a humble heart, uh, we should be able to turn ourselves to Him, telling God, God, I'm not able to do, but Lord, by your grace, by your strength, I will be able to do. And because first of all, we must come to a place where you should be able to say, yes, I need change in this area. I need help in this area and turn to the Lord and God will surely do something in your life. I'm sure the presence of God will just hit you right away wherever you are because of the unity in the spirit that all of us have. Just with this song, just listen to the song. You also sing with us and then you will be touched and we'll be touched. Thank you, Jesus. Shepherd of my soul I give you full control wherever you may lead. I will follow. I have made a choice to listen for your. Oh 
is by my side. big storm that comes your way to destroy you but if your foundation is upon the word of God the word that you received even today and your foundation is upon what Jesus has spoken and which we should all do that I'm telling you and we give ourselves into the hands of the Lord we will do well our words will be good we will become blessing to many instead of becoming troublesome to some people Yes, nobody likes troublesome people. Then it comes back to us. We get troubled by people. But today, if you take this wonderful decision in the presence of the Lord, God is going to bless you. Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for again, once again, speaking to us what our tongue can do and what it can do, bad or good, and how to bridle it by the power of your word. Yes, Father God, we submit you, not only our tongue, but our thoughts and our heart and everything because we need to speak right, Lord, to speak right. We need to have your Master God impartation into us and for that we need to submit to you. And that's what we come to your presence this evening. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Also, thank you for Master God, your servant, CG, to wait upon you to bring this word in times like this, which needs to be taken seriously by everybody. Lord, I pray every member in this church will open up their hearts and times for you, Father God, to be to build them up in every single way, yes, Father Jesus. God. Yes, we are all so many busy, so many things that we want to do for ourselves. But Lord, it's nothing better than giving you the best time, the prime time in our lives. Once again, thank you for everyone who joined today. Bless them, Father God. Guide them, O oh Father God. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' most precious name we pray, Lord. Amen. Amen. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, love of Father, sweet fellowship of Holy Spirit, be with each one of us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. Yes, it was indeed a, a very good Bible study. I must tell, I mean, well, to bring all those scriptures, if not about what CG is speaking, but he brought those powerful scriptures which belongs to the Lord. Unless one spends time in the presence of the Lord, cannot get. And those then imparting those into us and exhorting us. And that was definitely wonderful. I praise God for CG. God bless you and use you mightily. Hope you all were blessed.